These are the people who I want to appeal to. Make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan. To manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse and jump right back on. And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're now moving into our second segment. And this one surrounds the fact that uh, some schools will open this coming Monday. But are the children mentally ready to go back to school, knowing that they were out for about a, an entire year? Jenny is in with us to break that down for us. Jenny, good morning. Good morning. And Guys, you look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking nice so lovely you. as well. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you all too, because you know most of the time I don't get to see you. I know. I know. We can't wait to get you back. But Jen, we don't have in the, we don't have much time right now, so we want to get directly into this. Um, you know, at this point, uh, things could be at a at a, at a pull for the children. They've been out of school for an entire month. There is still a pandemic looming, and they might not know how to how to contest that they should go back to school. Some of them will be going back to school this coming Monday. Jen, a lot of the kids are excited about going back to school and seeing their their friends. And I just need to point this out. We've been talking over quite a while since the pandemic started that it's so important to make sure that we had kept, the families had kept the routines with the kids. But I need to also just point this out. Adolescence is the hardest stage of development. Mm. And a lot of the high school kids who are going back are adolescents. And they have not been able to be with the group that they need to help with their growth, their socialization skill, all these things. They have not been able to be with their friends. And so now they're going back in into this situation to see their friends. And parents really have a responsibility to talk to these children at home and prepare them for going back out there into the school setting and meeting with their friends to ensure that they do not get ill or things like that, right? Or, or bring things home to the family. Let, let me ask you, do you, yeah. th do you, do you think that it's, it's um, the parent's choice to send the child back or it should be something done in consultation, especially with a child who is capable of having the conversation? I really think that at that age, we're teaching them decision-making skills. We're helping them to do negotiation skills. Mm -hmm. I really think it's important that parents sit and talk with them. Mm -hmm. It's not mandatory right now. Yeah. It becomes mandatory um, I, I, later on this year, I think. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is like a test run. So talk with your child, find out if they are mentally ready to go back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying, I, I tell you, I, I have a nephew at the house. Um, but I also have other kids that I see and tell them these kids, girl, I don't think mentally they're ready to go back. Seriously. Um, when, when, and it's going to be such a thing that the parents really have to be talking with the children. Yeah. You should see some of the hair, hairdos, right? Yeah. The things that they've been able to do, the staying up late and um, nobody has been following the routines. Like we said, stick to a routine don't let them lose the routine so that they can fall back into classes easier yeah, yeah. you know that has not been happening i'm watching it i'm telling you um so can we just like run down through the things so i don't forget yeah anything? so you did routines you did the physical preparation uh school expectations yeah. so so they you make sure that as parents you give them some extra masks so in case they put their mask, you know what teenagers are like, they'll, they'll lose their mask, they'll take it off to eat and forget it. Give them some extra masks in your bags. Um, make sure that you have your chore list. Don't let them, you know, don't allow them to, to sort of fall off the routine of doing chores, getting their eight, nine hours of sleep, doing the homework. Um, and right over the pandemic, a lot of parents have been helping and a lot of times doing the work for the kids. Yep. Um, that has to stop because now they're going back into the school environment. Yeah. And I hope people have been listening as we've been talking about this over the year, mm -hmm. that they've been listening and trying to ensure that the children maintain some sort of routine. Yeah. The school expects them to come back in and, and be prepared to work mm -hmm. and act as, you know, act as students, um, despite the fact that the past year they've sort of been you know, sitting in front of a computer yeah. and teaching lectures. Uh, now they have to interact. They have to go back into classes and interact with. And that's the one of the tips 
that's one of the tips you have here. Start weaning the children off the electronics. Mm. Absolutely. Listen, this kid. You should see the parent John face he has on right now. <laughs> the parent I face mean, that John has. It's going to be a tough one. The iPads, the all the electronics. You you have to again. You have to give it to them medicinally. Oh. You can't allow them to have that take over their lives because they're not going to make it in school. Yeah. You know, it's back to being serious and being students again. And, and yet, so, I, I, I love the fact that you resorted to that, Jenny, because the situation is this currently. And I, as a parent, I could tell you, there's so many parents right now at home. They have to work from home, but they are not able to necessarily pay attention to the child. That child might have been in a classroom setting on the, on the tablet, but at this particular point, uh, uh, they, they have to go right back into, uh, into their classroom setting. Jenny, yep. a discussion on change. How do you have that? Because change is, is something that we're very reluctant to. It has to come in phases. This one now is actually, hey, Monday, you got to go back to school. That's a direct <laughs> I know, change. I know, it's just like dump, being dumped in there. But again, this is like a test run. It's not mandatory yet. So really, actually sit with your child mm -hmm. and encourage your child. It's really important to go back into the school and get back into the routine of being in classes, in person. Yeah. Whether they're ready or not, parents have, have this massive job of getting your child to understand you've got to go back. You can't sleep. You can't go anywhere and have half your pajamas and half of a shirt on top. Mm -hmm. You have to go back in there dressed like a student. You know, mm -hmm. even if you're not wearing a uniform yet, you still have to dress properly yeah. and behave with decorum in the classroom, <laughs> right? And so, and parents have to sit and have this talk with them, what the expectations of the school are and what you as a parent, what your expectation of your child, um, expectations are of this child <clears throat> going back into the school environment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they have been accustomed to, the, the, yes, they have the cameras and they're looking at them. I'm telling you, these kids, a lot of them have been sleeping through the classes yeah. and doing all kinds of stuff. And it's Monday. I mean, we, we kind of jumped on this kind of later ourselves because we have been saying it over the year, but now it's here. Yeah. It's here. It's two days, yeah. it's here. And yeah. so parents really have to jump out there and sit and have a family meeting. So the next thing I have on here is the family meeting. Yeah. Right? Ask them, are you excited about going back to school? How do you feel about going back? You're excited? You're worried? You're nervous? What's going on? Get, give them the opportunity to talk. But I, I put this um, other slide further down, but I'm going to say, no, please be empathetic. What do I mean empathetic? Don't, don't feel sorry for the child. You've got to try to put yourself in their shoes going back into this environment. It's scary. As a, as a parent, try to imagine yourself going back into this after a year of not seeing your friend, not seeing your teacher, and now you have to go back into the classroom and sit in the classroom and, and behave like a student. Ask them, what are you looking forward to going back to school? You know, Is there anything that you're worried about going back into the school? What are those things? Mm -hmm. Share them with me. Talk to your child. And the most important thing, you've got to listen to them. This is, this is, I guess, a part of, of, and I know when people see it, they're just thinking, okay, uh, well, I'll ask them. But it's actually the mental shift that you're trying to yes. trigger. Like, yes. it, a change is coming. Let's talk about how you may feel or what you're yes. thinking. Yeah. So yes. they're ready. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's so important that the parents have this dialogue. It's a dialogue. It is. It, and, and as parents listen to them, mm -hmm. hear what their concerns are. That's really, really important. Yeah. Because yeah. I know they have concerns. We know, we know they do. But it's important that they have a sounding board. And who best to listen to that would be the parents who are now expecting them to go back and perform and bring home good grades and do all these things rather than looking and going, okay, they haven't been in school for a whole year. I've got to lower my expectations, and, but still try to encourage them to do the best they can. Yeah. The expectation is to do the best you can, right? Are there any fears about going back into the classroom? What are you most concerned about going back to school? Find out these things from your child. I put some, some questions here to spark conversation. Add your own, add more. But talk with your children and most importantly, listen to what they have to say. Yeah. Can I ask the another other, question? 
Um, sure. I know. I, I know we have a lot to speed through. I should. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, adolescent is a tough time. Adolescence yes. is a tough time. Yes. There's all the changes that are taking place. They haven't seen friends in a year. You know, I know yes. what I've seen with children. They've been eating excessively. excessively. Their body image, their bodies have changed. And not just hormonal, like they've gained weight. They look different. And that's a really big deal for children that yeah. age. For yeah. that ha age group. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going back to high school, you're a little bit chunkier or you look, you know, how, how does a parent... Thing about that is that they probably all have gotten chunkier. Yeah, I know. But like, how do parents, especially children who have that kind of, 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 of concern already, how do they approach it? How do they recognize that this may be something that they won't verbalize, but is con worrying them? I'm so glad you brought that up. Ask them. If they don't bring it up, ask them. And then you see, that's one of the ways you trigger some, some doing some family thing, like going out walking in the evenings. It helps all of us, right? If, uh, if we take, walk up with the adolescents, or obviously you don't want them going out there with their friends at this point until they have settled, settled into their routines. But do some family time to get some exercise in. Go walk. Go up to the to the um, Marion Jones and go do some running, but do something to help the child because yes, teenagers tend tend to be very critical, especially of each other, and that is to be expected. But discuss that. That's one of the things you do in your family meeting, yeah. is to talk about all these things that they are concerned about, they have fears about, they're worried about, uh, what they're excited about. Don't don't just talk about the bad stuff, but talk about the stuff that what see my friends again i get to actually go and stand and talk to them and you you have to sit with them and let them understand some of the dangers that they might be facing Definitely. because the pandemic is still ongoing right okay so jen i think just before we continue on i one of the one of the things that's looming around for them um they've been living on a on a computer they've been living in tablets which is of course a new world and they've uh, they've not physically been socializing so how do you build social skills when you get back into the classroom? What are some of those things? Okay, could you repeat that? You had a, a, um, some disturbance just now. I was saying that uh, one of the things that they've been doing over the past year was actually living on a computer. They, that's the lifestyle on a phone, on a computer, anything that's a gadget, anything that's an electronic. Now, it's about building social skills all over again. So, so what would you say would be their approach or how should they approach in terms of building social skills again you, you want to hear something funny i was walking with my nephew mm. a couple of days ago and we're walking along and he's texting me i said why are you texting me mm -hmm. <laughs> he said this is how i talk to my friend we walk along and we, we text each other as we're walking along <laughs> but they have Wiley become walk. so accustomed to using the yeah. telephone to text their friends and communicate by by electronically right mm -hmm. yeah. They continue to do it even though they're they're there in the flesh with each other, and so yes, those are some of the things parents you need, you really have to sit and talk with your children, and talk to your teenagers in particular, that it's it's back to being person to person and establishing those those friendships and those close communications again and yeah. talking with each other. It I has to be a conversation. I um, Role model. One. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get at. I appreciate that? that you've included that because I think that maybe we haven't said that enough. Are we talking to our children about what new behaviors they have to implement at school? Yes. So, you know, you've been yes. home, you don't have to wash your hands as much or wear a mask, but when you go back, it's a whole it's, different uh, yes. story. Yes. So, and, and model it for them. Yes. Model it for them. And make sure they see you wearing your mask. Make sure they see you washing your hands after every activity. And it's so important to wash your hands. I, I do my, try to do mine every 20 minutes or so, get up, mm -hmm. go to the bathroom and wash my hands because I'm, I'm in the office, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I touch doors and things like that, so I just wash my hands. Demonstrate for them, model for them. Model for them the social distancing um, rules, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Stand far away. When you go to the, um, to the market, you, Demonstrate that for them. So let them see you doing it. If you if you cough, cover your mouth. If, if you sneeze, do the things like putting your, your shirt up. 
um, do all the things. Yeah. Do all the things. And then talk to them about not sharing pens, their pencils, things that you can pick up um, if you can pick up the virus or germs with, right? Mm -hmm. It's just basic things that we've known forever and ever that you, you, you want to make sure that you don't pick up colds, right? Yeah. So you be careful about picking up people's pens or don't drink out of the same cup um, and all those kinds of things. So demonstrate for them, role model for them, but also talk with them. I, and that's a big concern that I have is that we, we tend to um, expect that kids know everything because they're, they're little adults and they're not little adults. Mm -hmm. they, are, they, they have big fears, especially at that age group, yeah. the high school group. Okay? Well, they've got, a, they've got yeah. a mind of their own as well and uh, they are able to think for themselves. So simply we need as parents to listen to them. Yeah. And All right. If you notice, my next slide is just listen, 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 listen. People <laughs> listen to your kids. The biggest communi communication problem we have is that we we don't listen, listen. to understand. Mm -hmm. We listen to answer. Yeah. So we get stuck. As soon as you say something that we want to answer, we don't hear anything else. We want to make sure we get that answer into you, right? <laughs> Um, so next slide, I was I talked about it earlier, the importance of empathy. Yeah. Parents, if you can simply put yourself in your child's shoes for a few moments, you won't yell at them, you're, you're going to try to be more understanding of what they're going through. And just remember, that overload that I put there, teenage angst, right? <laughs> they are always upset. They're always angry. Um, because of that age, the hormones are raging, and some of the hormones is, is testosterone, you know, for the boys. And so, please, 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 try to put yourself in their shoes. Earlier, one of the slides that we missed, I just talked about some of the um, the depression and knowing the depressive signs. So please go to the uh, website and and get get this slide, get this um presentation, presentation. and. Look at the signs and symptoms of the two main things that the adolescents tend to go through: depression and anxiety. Yes. Okay, and they will be grieving this past year. They will be, and so some of them may present with depressive symptoms. Parents, for heaven's sake, talk with them. Pay attention. If it seems like it's way worse than 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 normal, you may want to bring them in to see someone. Okay, okay. very important. Oh, here it is. Uh, they, you see these signs, the isolation, the irritability, the deep sadness, right? The motivation. They're going to school and they seem unmotivated initially. We we'll sit and chat with them, find out what that's about. But if you're noticing the other signs going on also, please get them help. Don't assume anything, get them help. Yes. Then I have some signs of anxiety. I have one with panic attack, what that feels like and what it looks like. Yeah. So that you can tell if a child is going through that. And finally, I give my relaxing breath. It's, ex it's exceptional and it works for depression or for anxiety that you teach your child to do this in the evenings before they go to sleep. Yeah. Talk, talk, you know, shall we share with you and you share with them three things you're grateful for. And then you have them do the relaxing breath before they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, mm -hmm. encourage them to do it in the mornings when they get up before they get started with their day. They say a prayer, give thanks, and do the relaxing breath before they go out to school. That's Thank beautiful. you so much, Thank Jenny. You, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. I kind of race through that enough. But, but we covered it all. We covered, we covered, it, covered all. it all. Indeed. And, you know, we really appreciate it. It's about bringing it back to perspective. It's not just the conversation is whether teachers are ready, your parents are ready, or financially people can afford it. But we can't lose sight of what the children may be feeling. And that's what you did for us today. Definitely. Let us pay attention. Let us talk with them. Mm -hmm. If they are going back, let us prepare them, not just about washing hands, but also about how they feel emotionally and some of the changes that are to come. Yeah. And finally, yes. for me on this, Jenny, before we wrap things up, um, you know, just listening to you, myself as a parent, I actually feel now much more confident about a conversation with my children oh. than I did uh, just before we had this conversation. Jenny. Thank you, Thank you so, so very much. All you right. are welcome. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. So we're about to take a, uh, a take a break, and when we come back, we'll be discussing fine dining delivered. That's when we come back. These are the people who I want to appeal to. Make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, just jump right back on.